Well, how do there, people in the viewer verse? Tis I, Captain of Prestige, and look at this smile on this old mug of mine, and look at this cup of tea in this mug. Heck yes. I've got some news, people. Yes, Play Nightingale, the YouTube channel, has put out a new video about their game, Nightingale. Yeah, funny enough, that. Hold on. That's a lovely brew. I hope you've got yourself a lovely brew out there in the viewer verse. Heck yes, I do. Anyway, let's jump on over, people, and let's have a look at this video that they've done. Because, yeah, put it on for a an epic. There we go. Chicka boom. I'm over on the YouTube page, and here it is. I'm not going to make it full screen. If you want to watch this in full screen without the music playing in the background that I've got through my little Winamp down there, it's on Play Nightingale. They've got 10k subscribers, including moi. I am subscribed. So let's hit play, and let's... Um, I'll put the captions on and uh, I'm gonna react I'll be pausing this at times hey everyone walkers welcome back to the first developer update of 2023 so let's tackle what's probably the biggest question on your mind it's launch year so what can we expect we wanted to use this video to give you an update as to where we're at in development as well as the studio's focus for the coming weeks we really appreciate all of the feedback and positivity that you've been sending our way. It's just invaluable to us here at the studio, and it's really helped us shape what the coming weeks and months ahead look like. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So I love that. You know, they're acknowledging that this is their launch year. So we haven't got a launch date as yet from them, but it's on the cards. Hopefully we'll be getting some sort of launch date or some sort of idea of roughly when in the year, hopefully at some point. But I, they don't cover that off in this video, people. So if that's what you've tuned in for, it's not so much that. But here we go. But it's nice to hear that they're listening to all their feedback. And this is just about the feedback and what they're doing about that feedback. When we came back from the winter break, we've been doing a lot of prioritizing as we look at the roadmap for the rest of the year. Right now, we're pretty happy with the amount of content that we have for an early access launch. But based on the feedback that we were getting from the closed alphas, it was clear to us that we wanted to do some more work when it comes to reducing the friction between all of the different pieces, making them more cohesive, and more importantly, making sure that we have a really solid foundation that we can build on for the years ahead. As part of that decision making, we decided to forgo a playtest in January and February, as this will let our developers have more time to tackle their most important work. In previous playtests, we gave our developers two to three weeks for development time and then a week to squash out major bugs. By giving our developers more time, we're aiming to let our players experience a more impactful change. One area undergoing improvement is increasing amount of immersion that players feel when they're exploring the Fey Wilds. So we're making some adjustments to make sure that our realms feel more fantastical. One way that we're doing that is by introducing new foliage, resources, as well as creature variations. Elsewhere, our blueprint system has been received positively, so we're looking forward to introducing some new tile types to help empower player creativity. While we're talking about polishing current mechanics in the game, some of our playtesters reported that our gathering felt sluggish. So we've been studying the relationship between the animations and the in-game feedback. What we discovered is that while it may realistically make more sense that you get an item at the end of an animation, it does mean that there's more frames between you pressing a button and you getting the item. Whereas in other games, you might get that feedback maybe midway. We're changing it so even though the physical animation is the same, players are getting that in-game feedback much faster. This is something that we're looking to implement in the next playtest and ensure that it feels better for players. We've been learning a lot through this closed alpha period, and we hear that the game gets better with each and every one. Thank you to everyone who's involved in this process, and we look forward to maintaining this trend. With our focus being on refinements and improvements, this has led us to some decisions on some of the commonly requested community features that we've received. Now, what I really liked was those little bits of footage that they slipped in there. The water effects and the light reflections and the shadows when they were picking all those sorts of bits out in the wild, their resource gathering. I mean, the upscaled graphics for the Unreal Engine 5 is well worth that extra bit of weight that we've had to wait for Nightingale now. I mean, it looks freaking sublime. And again, they're listening to their feedback with the animation and also the resource gathering to speed that up a bit. Fantastic. And their blueprint system looks awesome. I'm liking the fact that you're using the blueprint system because I love the procedural elements inside of this game. Throughout development, community members have asked us if we'll have dedicated server support. We understand that there are multiple reasons for this request. For some, it's because in similar games, 
If you were to play with other people, one person would host the game and other person would join that instance. That means if the host is not online, it means others cannot continue with that particular save file. For Nightingale, we will have dedicated official servers at early access launch. This means that if you are playing with friends and you invite them to your realm and we all set that as your respite point, any one of you at any point will be able to start up that realm regardless of who is online. This is all included in the initial game offering as it's fundamental to our studio principles of fantastic spaces, meaningful places. We recognize that asynchronous play is not the only reason that people request for dedicated servers, as some community members are looking for the ability to host private servers, as these can sometimes allow for additional server options, modding, and even ensures that the game is available long after Studio has supported it. What you might find interesting is that many of these custom settings that we've seen other games employ are built into our realm card system. So for example, you will be able to make a realm easier or harder with minor realm cards, as well as things like make it always daytime or always nighttime. These tend to be a more gamified version of those server settings. There are other modifiers as well, and we look forward to showing them off to you closer to launch. There are also some benefits in having all of our initial players on official servers. The primary one being that we can streamline I love the fact that they're already thinking about the future of the game after the studio has supported the game and they do realise that modders and having your own server instances is the way that they can do that. Massive thumbs up. Support, as we can make sure that all of our players are playing the same version of the game. By having all of our players on official servers, we can collect and analyse aggregate data. So this way we can make sure there aren't any major issues with the game. Also by using this aggregate data, when we look at our feedback, we can see how that will impact the majority of our players and make sure it's not just from some vocal minority. Our team, which works with the more technical sides of the servers and networking, are working full time and focusing to make sure that the official servers will perform the best that they can. As we go through early access, we should be able to share some more concrete information on the availability of private servers, as well as that when they can be implemented. Similar to dedicated servers, we've been asked if we'll be supporting community modding. Many of our developers have enjoyed or even made mods for other games, so we're well aware of the benefits that they bring, from cool visual changes to personal UI preferences or gameplay settings, or even adding new content to a game. Mods can make a game feel fresh long after a studio has supported it. Much like private servers, we will not have official support for mods at the early access launch. This is mostly to make sure our official servers aren't being overloaded with foreign code, but it's also to make sure that we streamline support, and it's also to make sure that all of our feedback is coming from the same game experience. Once we've launched the game and we have a better idea of our update cadence, as well as the server capacity and the community demand, we hope that we can revisit this and support it in some capacity in the future. I like the fact, again, that they've touched on mods and how mods can actually change the game up a bit. And they're fully aware that mods are probably a good way of, you know, end of life support. But for, at launch, mods, it doesn't look like we're getting mod support, but that's fully understandable as to why. We know that you're eagerly anticipating a launch date. And while we don't have one just yet, we are getting closer. Making definitive choices on some of these requests that we've gotten helps us focus on the core of the game and also make sure that we get it to you in both a timely and quality manner. If you're looking to get into a playtest, the good news is we do have more planned. So make sure that you keep an eye either on our Discord or on your emails for more details when it's available. Thank you all again for your continued patience, understanding, and support as we continue this journey towards launch together. We'll see you next time. Okay, well that's pretty darn freaking awesome. Let's just jump on over into their actual channel. Now for those of you that haven't really come across Nightingale before and this is your first time coming across it, just to show you why I'm excited about it, I'm just going to hit the Nightingale gameplay trailer. So here we go. What I would say though, this is before they moved it over to Unreal Engine 5 and it looked freaking awesome then. So here we go, let's make this nice and full screen for you people in the viewerverse. You're alone in the realms, I'm afraid. The portals are a mess. Not even sure if Nightingale made it. 
Given how fragile you humans are, I'd say that staying fed, dry, and rested should be your priority. If the portal arch is inactive, you'll need to make realm cards from rare resources. Once you have realm cards, you can activate the portal. Beware the Foul things lurk in the interrealmic void, waiting to get in. Be ready with your axe pick. Okay, so that's 19 gal in a nutshell. Thank you, as it is. But yes, it's got it's got procedural elements. So when you put down those realm cards, that sort of denotes the sort of realm that you're going to be going into and sort of conjures up a place for you to go into, which is freaking great. And you can have your own respite zone where you can do base building. There's giant fauna. It's open worldy. It's procedural. It ticks all my boxes of the games that I get excited for. And this one I am extremely, extremely excited for. There's a couple of games that I'm extremely excited for. 19 Gale is one. The only trouble is it's only available on Steam and PC. I'm hoping it gets a third person mode because at the moment it's just first person and I'm hoping it gets third person. I'm also hoping that they add in the camera mode. They have added in fishing which is good but yeah there's a few things that I hope to see put on their radars at some stage including cross-platform and maybe even cross-play in the future depending on how successful it is I guess on Steam. But yes yeah, so that's one that I'm definitely watching. There's another game that I'm watching that's procedural and uh, pretty darn colourful and nice and also uses Unreal Engine 5 and that's called Under a Rock and check that one out, that's quite cool as well that's in early dev though um, but hopefully it's going to get a release sort of date maybe this year, maybe next, don't know for sure Maybe I'll do a follow-up video on that. The other game that I'm really excited for is a Blue Protocol. It's an online anime sort of MMO RPG, which looks freaking great. That's supposed to be coming out this year. I'm going to have to go check and see if there's any new news on that. Maybe I'll have a cup of tea episode on that later this week, people in the view of us. But hopefully this has put Nightingale on your radar and made you think, actually, this is a real nice game developer. This looks like a great game. I'm going to start learning more. Go and subscribe to their channel. Thank you. So I'll put a link in the video description, go hit them up. But yeah, until next time, people, thank you for watching. I've nearly got to the bottom of my mug of tea. It's getting there. Downed it! Heck yes, I did. Boom! <laughs> until next time, goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again!